Welcome to the third module in our self-help program. Our goal for this video is to present an effective tool for getting rid of your sleep problems called sleep restriction therapy. Sleep restriction therapy is the main ingredient in this self-help program and all the other techniques, tools and advice revolves around it. You may ask why we chose sleep restriction as the main focus of our self-help program and the answer is simple. Because decades of research indicates that it's the most effective method for improving sleep. To explain what sleep restriction is, we must first explain a few things about sleep in general and introduce some important concepts. The first thing we're going to ask ourselves in this video is what really makes us fall asleep in the first place? There are two processes responsible for this, and we'll go through them both. Our circadian rhythm and our sleep pressure. Every human has a 24-hour internal clock called a circadian rhythm that ticks and taps every day of your life. Here we see a regular profile where you get up here and go to bed here with the same pattern throughout the week. Light, especially sunlight, has been shown to be the most important factor for adjusting the brain's built-in clock. But it's not just biology that affects our circadian rhythm. Activities, habits and social factors also affect it. The time we get out of bed is the most important habit of setting your daily rhythm. We make it easy and predictable for our circadian rhythm if we get up at the same time every day throughout the week. We'll return to that point later on. Our inner clock also has a built-in need for sleep, called your sleep pressure which can vary from person to person, and the common perception that one needs eight hours of sleep is an oversimplification. Some can cope with six hours, while others need eight just to get through a normal day. In addition to the duration, the quality of sleep is also very important in regulating sleep pressure. The simplest and most convenient principle for most people is that you get enough sleep when you feel reasonably refreshed during daytime. When you're awake, your sleep pressure builds up over time. This system works analogous to other mechanisms in your body. For example, thirst, where thirst builds up gradually if you don't drink water. And by drinking water, the thirst disappears. We have the perfect bedtime scenario when your sleep pressure is high while your circadian rhythm is pointing to sleep, as you see here. As you sleep, your sleep pressure decreases. The same happens the rest of the week. In people with insomnia, these two processes are unsynchronized, where the person does not have a high sleep pressure when the daily rhythm is set to sleep, or vice versa. For example, daytime sleeping reduces sleep pressure, which means less pressure when the circadian rhythm is set to sleep at your bedtime. The same happens if you go to bed too early, before you're sleepy. The main purpose of sleep restriction therapy is to build a powerful sleep pressure that makes you fall into sleep and sleep well throughout the entire night. Sleep restriction is really about being strict with yourself and only allowing yourself to sleep under certain circumstances. Look at this graph. Here we see a typical sleep pattern for a person with major sleep problems. This person goes to bed early at 7 in the evening, but only sleeps a tiny half an hour before awakening. The same happens several times during the night. In addition to this, the person sleeps a little at 12 o'clock. The first step of sleep restriction is to collect all these periods of sleep into a single sleep window, that is at night. A sleep window is actually the time you allow yourself to be in bed to sleep. You find your sleep window by putting together all the periods you have slept into a single segment of sleep. Most people with sleep problems will have a difficult time getting to sleep in a strict sleep window, especially in the beginning before your body gets used to it. As you're only allowed to sleep in your sleep window and not during the day, this means that you'll probably get less sleep than you really need in the beginning. This increases your sleep pressure, making it easier for you to fall asleep and sleep throughout the night. In other words, 
Sleep restriction will gradually give you better sleep efficiency, which is the time you sleep divided by the total time you spend in bed, including the time you are awake in bed while trying to sleep. If you multiply this number by 100, you get a percentage score. People with sleep difficulties often have a very low sleep efficiency, which means that they spend a lot of time awake in bed. This is very unfortunate for two main reasons. Firstly, being awake in bed for a long period is uncomfortable and secondly, it can cause frustration which might make you even more awake. A sleep efficiency of 85% or more is considered normal. To find your new sleep window, check the sleep diary you started last week. Here you'll find your average sleep duration from the whole week. This is the length of your new sleep window. Then find a suitable time for you to wake up. For example, if you have to get up at 7 for work, and if your sleep window is 6 hours, then go to bed at 1 am the entire first week. If you are free to wake up whenever you want, we recommend that you set a wake up time that suits your everyday life. But think about not getting up too late to avoid missing out on crucial morning light that can help you regulate your circadian rhythm. For example, if you have a sleep window of 5.5 hours, it's possible for you to set your wake up time to 8 am and bedtime to 2.30 am. It's your job to find out what works for you. This sleep window should be held every day, including the weekend, for a minimum of one week. The next week you can adjust your sleep window, but only if your sleep efficiency is usually around 85%. You then adjust it with 15 minutes per week. You place the additional 15 minutes at your bedtime while the time you get up remains the same. Usually is an important keyword here. One night of poor sleep is no reason to change your plan. You stop the adjustment when your sleep efficiency is more than 85% and you sleep well throughout the night. For some this might take a few weeks and for others several months. To do this right, you must continue using your sleep diary this period to monitor your sleep pattern and sleep efficiency. If you find that you do not get a high sleep efficiency of around 85% within 1-2 to two weeks with your original sleep window, then you'll have to reduce it to achieve this. We recommend that you find a new sleep window by repeating the process just like you did the first time only by using the last week as a reference point where you've probably slept less than before starting sleep restriction, making your new sleep window a tougher but more effective one. If you add up all your sleep time during the week and see that it is less than 5 hours, it's recommended that you put in 5 hours of sleep as a starting point. People usually report that a sleep window less than 5 hours can be too tiresome to implement in their daily life. But if 5 hours doesn't give you the effect you want and you feel like you're up to it, you can choose a sleep window that is less than 5 hours, if that's what your sleep diary indicates. When you begin sleep restriction, it will probably take a few days before your body understands what's happening. This is normal and you'll just have to give the process a little time. For some, it only takes a few days, and for others, a couple of weeks. This means that you might end up with less sleep than before you started sleep restriction. And that might sound very strange. You're doing this to get more sleep, not less. But in this process, it's important to remember what we talked about earlier. Getting less sleep than you need over time increases your sleep pressure, and this is the most important tool we have. Your job is to gradually increase the amount of time you lie in bed, thus increasing the time you sleep. Most people find that the sleep they receive during sleep restriction is of a better quality than before, and that's what we want. Nevertheless, we have to warn you, if you get less sleep than usual, be really careful not to do activities that can be dangerous due to sleepiness, such as driving a car or handling heavy machinery. But with this exception, one should generally not be afraid of a period of sleep restriction. It's also important that your sleep pressure doesn't get deflated because of daytime sleeping. If you do this properly, 
You should avoid this, no matter how tired you may be. Your only sleep should be in your sleep window. Just the same point applies to extra sleeping in the weekends. If you spend the weekend to recover lost sleep, then your sleep restriction will have no effect, meaning that it will be better not to start sleep restriction in the first place. We recommend that you commit yourself and find a new bedtime and wake-up time, that is, your new sleep window. Try to find strategies you can use in the morning when it can be very demanding to get out of bed. You can ask a friend or a family member, maybe double alarm clocks. Some have to go straight in the shower, while others have to get a cup of coffee before they take off their pajamas. It's your job to find out what suits you. With a little bit of effort now, you can increase your chances of getting long-term improvement in your sleep. And the stricter you are with yourself, the better sleep you can expect. As mentioned earlier, this is the most important part of this sleep program. And we know that this is easier said than done, because it's really hard work maintaining a strict sleep window. And if you're sure that you're not able or willing to do this, then this is not the program for you, as the rest of the modules assumes that you engage in sleep restriction. We recommend that you set up and use your new sleep window for one week before starting the next module. But if you wish, you can also start the next module right away, as soon as you set up a sleep window. Please use our free mobile application in this process. You'll find a link to the next module in the video description. Good luck.